you've just spent three days perfecting a new navigation component. Every state is documented, every variant is labeled. You have written detailed specs, annotated your Figma files, and even recorded a quick video explaining the interaction patterns. You hand it off to your developer, and then they start building. And then two weeks later, you're in staging, and the padding is wrong. The hover states don't match. The mobile breakpoint is using the wrong token. And then you ping your dev. Uh, hey, hi, how's it going? Uh, just a few tweaks here and there but they are already three features ahead and deep into the next sprint. Sounds familiar? Well, this is the design developer handoff that we all know so well, but very soon this will be in the past for everybody. It's expensive and it requires a lot of context switching. And also there is a relationship strain when you know you just realize that or you just notice something is off with the build and then you need to raise the issue all the time. But most importantly, this contributes to the slow erosion of your design system's integrity. In the past, we've been trying to solve design to code translation slash interpretation problem with better documentation. But what if the problem isn't our documentation at all? What if it's the fact that developers have to manually convert, build our designs into code in the first place? So what is our missing link in this workflow? Well, it's called MCP. If you never heard of MCP before, you might be living under a rock. But don't worry, I will give you an explanation. So MCP stands for Model Context Protocol, and it is a new standard that enables AI agents to read and interpret the structured information in your design files, including components, properties, tokens, documentation, and use that information to generate code, update systems, and bridge the gap between design and development. It sounds wonderful, right? So basically, MCP teaches your design files to speak developer. Yeah. And not through better annotations in Figma or clearer documentations in Confluence or Notion, wherever you put it, but by making the structure of your designs directly machine readable. So what does this really mean? So when you have a button component and it has clear variants, consistent naming, and proper tokens applied to it, MCP can expose all this information to AI coding tools, such as Claude Code, which can then generate the actual implementation. It basically codes your design. This sounds wonderful, and I am I'm sure of it, like this is the future. If your company hasn't started investigating this path yet, you should urge them, definitely. Okay, now the real problem we are solving with MCP, and if we really want to analyze it, like we really need to think about what actually happens during a handoff. So there are some gaps that we are trying to fill here, right? So there is a documentation gap. So what happens is, you document 90% of the components and the developer implements based on that 90%. And the missing 10% gets filled in with assumptions. And then there is a translation slash interpretation gap. Even when documentation is perfect, humans interpret things differently. So you say that padding is eight pixel, right? And that might become 0.5 RAM, which renders as a seven pixel on their setup. And then there is the context gap. So by the time a bug's surface, by the time you recognize it or realize it, everybody moved on. You moved on, developers moved on, PMs moved on, everybody moved on. And nobody really remembers why a decision was made. So you really need to use archeology span and dig through files like why you made a decision because nobody remembers. And then, there's the momentum gap because each back and forth conversation between design and development really adds days or even weeks to the development cycle, to the development time. And if you multiply that by dozens of components and hundreds of changes, 
you're looking at months of accumulated delay. So now, MCP is not like a magic wand, but it can eliminate one gap completely. It can remove entirely the translation interpretation gap. Now let's see how it actually works. So here's the simplest way to think about the MCP. Let's look at the traditional flow. Okay, so first you design a component in Figma, you write documentation explaining how it should work, a developer reads your documentation, they build their interpretation in code, you QA and find mismatches, and then you repeat steps four and five until it's right. Yeah? Now, the MCP enabled flow. You design a component in Figma with clear structure. MCP exposes that structure to AI tools. AI generates code that matches your structure. You and your dev review the generated code together. You catch issues immediately while context is fresh, and you both iterate from the same source. So the key difference is that MCP moves this translation step earlier from after the developer has already built something to right after you designed it. And this is huge. Now, if you are not familiar with the concept yet, I would like to give you some real world scenarios where MCP can change everything. Okay, scenario one, when you build a new feature. Let's say your PM wants a new dashboard card component. You design it with three size variants, small, medium, large, and four states, default hover loading error. So let's see what it looks like without MCP. You document everything, hand it off, and three days later, your dev asks, what spacing should I use between the icon and text? You realize you forgot to specify it. Add another day. Now with MCP. You design with proper auto layout in Figma. MCP reads your spacing, exposes it to the AI coding assistant and generates the initial implementation in minutes. Your dev reviews it. You both spot the icon alignments issue immediately and it gets fixed in the same session. Now, scenario two, updating design tokens. Let's say your brand refreshes. The primary blue changes from this to that and you need to update 47 components. Without MCP, you update Figma, you update documentation, you update the design system site, developers update their token files. Inevitably, some components get missed. You discover them three months later. With MCP, you update your Figma token. MCP connected tools can automatically detect the change, flag affected components, and help generate the code updates. Everyone works from the same source of truth. Scenario three. MCP can help with QA and bug fixes. Imagine that you are reviewing a new feature in staging. The spacing feels off, but you cannot quite tell why. So without MCP, it looks like you take a screenshot, measure with browser tools, compare to Figma, write up Jira tickets. Your dev investigates, realizes they use margin instead of padding, and they are going to fix it in the next sprint. Delay. Now, with MCP, because the code was generated from your Figma structure, you can trace the issue back to the source immediately. Was it a design decision or a generation error? You know instantly and can fix it on the spot. Now, what do you need to do right now? You might know that MCP is still emerging. Maybe you already started using it, in your organization, maybe you haven't started using it yet. But either way, you can prepare your workflow today. And I have four steps for you that you can start doing right away, okay? So first step, clean up your component structure. Start thinking about your Figma components as data, not just visuals, which means consistent naming conventions across all components, proper use of variants, not separate components for every state, tokens applied systematically, not hard-coded values, auto layout everywhere when it makes sense. Step two, document with machines in mind. Your component descriptions should be structured and consistent. Instead of, this is a button that does stuff, you should say purpose, primary action trigger, variants, default, hover, active, disabled, loading, sizes, small, 32 pixel, medium, 40 pixel, large, 48 pixel, tokens, uses surface primary, text inverse, border radius, MD. 
Step 3. Sync with your dev team on the structure. Set up a 30-minute meeting with your developers and ask, how do you currently handle design tokens, if you don't know the answer yet? What information is most useful in hand of documentation? Where do things typically get lost in translation? How do you name components and variants in code? So your goal here is alignment. Because when MCP starts translating between your words, design word and dev word, you both need to have a similar, well, the same mental model so that things can go smooth. And step four, what you can do tomorrow or even today. Start small with just one component. I would recommend pick your primary button component and just make it bulletproof. Yeah? How do you do that? You need to clearly define every variant. All states documented, tokens properly applied, naming consistent, properties exposed and labeled. So this is your MCP ready template. And when MCP matures, you will be ready to scale. Now the limitations. This is not a holy grail yet. An MCP is great and all, but we also need to be clear about what MCP is not yet. It doesn't understand design intent. MCP can read that your button has 16 pixel of padding, but it cannot know why you choose 16 pixel or when to break that rule. Design reasoning still requires human judgment. It's also not magic. You still need well-structured components. If you put garbage in, then garbage comes out. If your Figma file is messy, MCP cannot fix that. MCP is still early. Implementation varies by tool, not everything is supported yet, and you will probably hit some rough edge cases. And it requires buy-ins from both sides. If your dev team isn't interested or your design files aren't structured, MCP again won't help. MCP is a collaboration tool. It's not a replacement for collaboration. Okay, now where this all is heading. So right now, MCP works in one direction. And the direction is design artifacts go into code. So it just codes the design. But the real transformation is going to happen when it becomes bidirectional. So when your production app automatically syncs back to your design system, when a developer makes an emergency hotfix to adjust spacing, your Figma file updates to reflect reality. And when users trigger a state you didn't design for, your component library flags that gap. So basically, your design system becomes a living reflection of what's actually shipped, not just what you intended to ship. And this is the future. And the designers and developers and the teams who start preparing right now using clean structures and conventions and aligned processes, they will be the ones ready to take advantage when that future arrives. So how can you go about this? Well, you don't need to master MCP overnight. I am still learning it myself. I am on this AI learning journey. I've been using AI for two years now at my work, but there are so much to learn. Like right now regarding MCP, what you can do is you can start making your design work more machine readable. Like start it tomorrow. Pick one component, clean up its structure, document it systematically, and talk to your developer team. Like what do they need? Understand them. And I guarantee you, if you do that now, you are ahead of the 95% of the other designers. Because the future of dev design handoff is not like writing better documentation. No, not at all. It's about making documentation completely obsolete. And I will leave you with this thought. I really hope you enjoyed this video hoping to make videos about AI, AI tools in the future. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And I also have a newsletter if you're interested in written content. All right. I see you next time. Bye.